Hello, Retro fans. Yes, I'm still alive, and yes, I'm still doing uh, retro related things. So, um, if you follow me on Twitter, then you may be more or less informed of what I'm doing right now. Um, I had to take sort of a break from making YouTube videos because uh, actually um, during the last weeks we had some very hot temperatures here in Germany and um, this is actually not very, well let's say, comfortable to work on retro related things because most of those uh, retro hardware thingies are producing a lot of heat and uh, the PC I'm using to record videos and do stuff uh, is uh, producing a lot of heat and uh, not to mention soldering at all so I wasn't really in the mood to work on um, well some retro projects and uh, decided to well make a short break and uh, get some stuff sorted. Uh, you may know uh, I have moved to a new location about three months ago now. I have to think, yeah. And uh, I'm still <laughs> in the progress of getting my stuff unboxed and uh, getting it sorted into my shelves. I'm going to change a couple of things because I was a bit unhappy in the old location and therefore I decided, okay, if I'm going to, well, um, kind of sort or uh, how to say that in, in the meaning I really want to pinpoint. Um, if I'm really going to, let's say, set up a new kind of studio, I'd like to change a couple of things. I'd like to improve a couple of things. So I started to use a lot of uh, transparent boxes, for example, to sort my stuff. I'm starting to um, label all that things so that I am able to find them quite easily. And uh, I'd like to sort all that stuff into, well, let's say projects so that I have everything in one place and that I do not have to go through a couple of boxes to find the pieces I'm looking for. It is a little bit tricky because there are some pieces uh, like electronic parts or something like this that um, are maybe related to multiple projects or something like this. And uh, there are some things that are a bit bulky. They won't fit into boxes, so that's another issue. But, uh, well, that's actually something I'm going to figure out how to do this. But um, especially this video is uh, dedicated to a very, very um, generous um, donation to my uh, channel. And uh, I have really, I have to say, very very big thank you to Adam who has sent me a huge box uh, with very interesting parts and <laughs> we are going to uh, see this uh, here in a second and uh, yep yeah, so actually the weather has changed a little bit we had yesterday a pretty severe uh, thunderstorm uh, rain situation uh, a lot of trees are broken. I had a short bicycle ride this morning and uh, there were a couple of paths where I had to well, carry my bike over broken trees and all that things. Uh, we got a bit amount of rain, not really that much um, to, well, let's say, bring the whole landscape back to life because everything is really, really dry here. And um, this is actually a video I have recorded out of my uh, studio window uh, just to, well, see how the thunderstorm went through here. And uh, as I said, it looks like in some areas it has been even more severe and uh, it has caused a lot of damage. But fortunately, temperatures have dropped a bit, uh, not really a bit, about 10 to 12 degrees. So it is really um, going to feel 
much better right now <laughs> and uh, uh, it is actually more like a summer you may know it anyway so uh, to cut a long story short <laughs> I think so much about uh, the current situation let's jump directly to my desk and to all the things I'd like to talk about in this episode And, well, as usual, sort of, uh, we have a view on my desk already so that we can see what I'm talking about. And uh, let's switch this a bit. And uh, you may have seen in some of my previous videos that I started to um, get my hands on some Acorn Electron devices. And I wasn't really... Um, successful with this approach because the first two ones I have uh, one I bought about two years ago and one has been sent to me by Adam as well uh, they they are broken they are not working and I started to try to repair one uh, already and this is actually uh, one of the broken boards I have in, in well in work or in progress for quite a while uh, without being very successfully with this one but um, then I had a chance to buy a working board on eBay Germany for quite um, well okay price and uh, placed this into this case and uh, started to tinker a little bit with this one just to learn that uh, the key K isn't working so <laughs> it is um, the device itself it is working fortunately oh that's an interesting view so uh, let's go for this one but uh, yep the key K isn't working and I checked the PCB already so the traces are all fine and um, these are some sort of real keys so you can simply measure whether they have a contact or close close contact or not. And the key K is that. So I really have to disassemble that whole keyboard and see if I can find a replacement or if I can repair this uh, key so that I can uh, use this one. But uh, fortunately, as you can see, it is doing something at all. And I'm quite happy about this situation. And uh, thank well, well, thanks to Adam, I'm not short on Acorn Electrons right now, so I can move on to the next things. And um, yep, talking about the next things, um, let's make a bit some let's make some space. Yep, I think that's a good idea to see what's, what has been sent to me. So, well, another Acon, <laughs> as you can see, and uh, it is in sort of good condition, I have to say. It looks quite nice. Uh, it has some um, yellowish keys, but uh, that's actually not really an issue because... I have received a bag of keys and they look uh, indeed a bit better than the ones that are here. So I'm probably going to swap those uh, set of keys and uh, maybe I'm going to try some uh, retro writing with these ones, uh, which is going to be quite simple because this uh, the, the Acorn Electron or the Elk as it is um, uh, called by um, the fans of it um, has less keys than a C64 and therefore it is quite easy to put them in a box and do some retro writing and that's something I'm going to test with this one 
and uh, very nicely this one is working as well so we can have a look at it so just have to find the right input and here it is and uh, what we can see here is actually a pretty interesting uh, phenomenon and uh, I couldn't figure out what's actually going to be the problem here. Uh, I'm a quick bit surprised that the picture isn't fitting. So, well, I may have to change a few things on my capture setup, but what I was uh, going to say is actually um, the picture is some sort of wobbling a bit and uh, I'm using the RGB output connected to the OSSC and I went through a couple of settings already to see if this is a, a sync issue or if this is um, somewhere related to the output of the Acorn and um, both machines, the one I've had on my desk already and this one are showing the same symptom so that's probably something ah interesting <laughs> now we got one where the key k is working and uh, now we lost sync for a second but l isn't working o is okay and the other keys appear to be okay as well just have to pay attention that we are not going to hit break Oh, so there's really something going on with the uh, OSSC, which I may have to investigate a little bit further uh, because it's a bit strange that we are losing sync all of the time here. So that's probably something I need to spend some time with it. And uh, maybe I can find the reason for this wobbling picture. And since this is going to be a little bit annoying, uh, let's jump back to the desk and uh, let's say move on with this content I have received. So uh, this one needs to, is, is requiring some attention as well. Well, that's uh, part of the deal, I think. And the next interesting thing is that uh, Adam has sent me a board as well and the uh, interesting thing about this one is that this is a different revision so this is a little bit like in the c64 world so we have uh, different boards different revisions or issues as it is called and um, this one has some sort of an um, improved changed whatsoever called socket so it's actually an issue for board like this one but uh, as you can see it is uh, using a different uh, socket for the ula and uh, i gave this board a quick test in the other case and uh, this uh, working as well so uh, this time uh, we were able to move two elks across um, the border between well <laughs> UK and Germany without losing the functionality like uh, we've had with uh, the first uh, package I have received so uh, I'm actually very happy that I have uh, basically three working boards right now and uh, somewhere in my boxes who knows where I have a third case as well with a broken board and uh, I'm probably going to put this one in the other case so that I have at least uh, working elks in different conditions uh, because the main reason for doing so is actually that the Acorn Electron requires a keyboard connected to the board in order to start, in order to work 
And uh, it's not like uh, with the C64 where I'm used to kind of uh, having a board on my desk, just put some power in, video cable, and then I can do things with cartridges or whatsoever uh, without even attaching a keyboard. This isn't working for the uh, uh, um, Acorn Electron. So yeah, very, very nice to have this one. And it's always good to have some spare parts as well. So we can actually put this back into the box just to keep it there until I'm going to need this. And just in case something is going to break, I have received a power supply as well. This is actually a mod converter from uh, 19, 18, 19 volt AC to uh, the different voltages required in DC for the uh, ALK. So it's very handy to have one here as well in case uh, one of the other ones is going to break. And um, so I have a chance to uh, make a list of uh, parts, for example, and get some replacements already uh, just for backup. And yeah, I have received a power supply as well um, with a changed cable. That's quite interesting. So uh, somebody spent already some time replacing the original um, feels like 10 meter long cable. <laughs> so that's indeed a different one. And uh, I'm probably going to uh, change this one so that I get a switch in uh, or, well, in, into the cable because as you can see neither the PSU nor the electron itself has a power switch so you can simply uh, you, you have to uh, unplug and plug it if you want to power cycle or something like this and that's indeed a bit cumbersome and therefore I'm going to change probably this one to a switch version and I'm um, actually searching for replacement um, PSUs as well because as you can see it's a UK plug and in Germany we are not used to use them <laughs> so for every UK uh, power supply I'm adding to my retro setup I require to have an adapter and uh, I was looking for um, I don't know how do you call this it's a it's a line of sockets with a power cord on it and a power distributor or something like this from uh, the UK but uh, the only one I could find on Amazon for example cost about 55 euros <laughs> and that's pretty expensive <laughs> so I can buy a lot of adapters but uh, they consume so much space that uh, you waste a lot of uh, your capabilities of your power distribution. So that's something I need to address as well, because that's not the only thing that requires some power. I have received another piece and that's the Acon data recorder, um, call it ALF uh, within the Electron community. And uh, there was a special reason or purpose I was really looking for one because it is designed in the very same way like uh, the Acorn itself. So if you just ignore video output for a while and place them side by side you probably see what I'm talking about. It is really like a uh, electron cut in half. <laughs> and added the tape functionality to it. And this is what I really love about this uh, tape recorder. Technically, perhaps it's not the best in the world, but uh, well, it is a tape recorder and therefore we are probably not going to be too picky. And I really, really love the design they have um, used for this one. And um, unfortunately, well, yeah, you can't place them side by side because as you have seen, we have to connect the power cable and we have to connect the uh, tape cable on this side of the electron. 
And then um, the data cable and the power supply is added to the other side of the ALF. But uh, maybe I can come up with something to route the cables in a slightly different way, just have some adapter piece in the middle or something like this. I don't know, some 3D printed things or something like this. And uh, yep, I started to tinker around with the ALF, uh, with the Acon data recorder already. And um, yep, it is very, very suitable for this whole hobby because <laughs> it isn't working fully. So I have to spend some time. I have to repair this. Uh, uh, I have to build a cable. I started to build a cable, but it looks like there are some... Um, different opinions about how the data cable is actually built for the Acon Electron and um, I was able to load a game once uh, well let's say I was able to load data once into the Acon Electron but then uh, it has stopped working by whatsoever reason I have no idea I wasn't able to save something and I learned that the counter isn't working so probably the belt is uh, broken and uh, maybe the uh, the heads uh, they, they require some cleaning something like this and uh, the cable I have uh, started to build which should provide this uh, functionality that the ALK is controlling the ALF isn't working neither so uh, probably there's something broken here or I have messed something up with the cable. So that's something I really have to dig into. And uh, then hopefully I get this uh, duo to work together because this is really something I like to use. I have a couple of ideas what I want to do with the Acon Electron. Um, it has a very interesting basic with a lot of functionality and uh, without uh, any blaming uh, compared to the C64, the Electron Basic is way more advanced. And uh, I really want to do a couple of things because, well, I'm sort of a basic fan. I mean, it has been my very first programming language I have learned uh, somewhere in the mid late 80s. And uh, I have used it across a couple of different systems already. And uh, I did some, well, first line typing, so to say. And I'm, I'm really impressed by uh, the Electron capabilities. So, and uh, I mean, to push this a bit further, I need something to save to. And uh, I think for a classic system like this, a tape recorder, a data recorder is probably the best choice. So, and, yep, I have um, a spare part speaker, <laughs> probably the most important thing. <laughs> and, uh, yep, that's basically the overview of the um, donation I have received. This is actually the power supply for the tape recorder. It is actually using a different plug, which has caused me some headache because uh, I wasn't able to use this power supply in parallel with the power supply for the Electron because I'm still waiting for the adapter. But uh, this is a simple 6 volt DC power supply, so that's actually not uh, rocket science. It's not so complicated to replace this, but I had to find the matching plug, magic plug, matching plug, not magic, matching, <laughs> uh, because it is inserted into the ALF a little bit deeper than um, most of the plugs are able to do so. As you can probably see here. And uh, therefore I had to sort of tune or, or modify the one I'm using right now. And this is a multi-purpose uh, power supply where you can easily ex exchange uh, the plaques here and I had to cut off a, bit, a little bit of the material so that it inserted into the ALF completely 
and uh, it has actually worked fine. And one cool feature, uh, that's something I can mention already, is you can power this data recorder with batteries as well. So just in case you're running out of um, power supplies or something like this, you can insert four uh, batteries into this one and then uh, you some sort of off the grid. I have no idea how to power the elk itself, but uh, probably I can figure out something. <laughs> Not sure about this, but uh, well, that could be an interesting idea. Yep, and that's actually um, besides some some tiny parts, some PCBs, and uh, some non elk related uh, things. That has been the content of the package I have received from Adam. So big, big, many, many thanks from the bottom of my heart. I really appreciate um, your support, your donation, uh, because that's really helpful, especially for this UK sourced stuff. Uh, if I'm going to order this uh, via eBay, for example, it is really, really expensive to pay uh, for shipping and for a tax and for uh, the the uh, custom fees, for example. And uh, getting this in one package, it's probably going to be way easier than doing this here from Germany. And since the Acorn Electron wasn't so famous in Germany, it is a bit hard to get parts here. But um, this is actually leading to the next thing I'd like to present to you. I was able to get something on eBay Germany for a surprisingly low price. And uh, that's another unique thing built by uh, the company Acorn. And this is basically the plus three extension. So I'm running out of space a little bit here. So let's just move this aside. Oh. <laughs> and um, it is impressive to me because on the one side, we have this sort of tiny um, 8-bit computer, which is design-wise really something I love. And then you're going to add this huge <laughs> expansion unit to it. <laughs> and this renders this uh, little acorn a bit, uh, almost as big as the Commodore C128. <laughs> but um, yep, that was the way it has been designed. And you have a 3.5 uh, millimeter uh, inch, sorry, 3.5 inch disk drive and you got this whole disk drive operating system the, the ADFS system integrated here as well I think it includes a memory expansion as well I haven't checked this one and um, yeah it adds actually the opportunity or the capability to save and load data from disks as you may imagine, it is not going to be this standard 3.5 inch HD 1.44 megabyte um, disk format. Nope, it is an older, simpler format. Uh, it's a double density disk, which I do not have right now. So that's actually something I had to order. And I'm sort of desperately waiting for it. And the next thing I really have to work on is actually, usually this Acon Electron Plus 3 unit is delivered with a so-called welcome disk. And the welcome disk contains a couple of utilities which are really important for, let's say, day-to-day -day usage. And the most important feature of the welcome disk is a program to create disks for this drive. And uh, therefore, you really have a situation that is actually a little bit challenging because I'm, I'm missing the disk. And so I cannot create disks for the Acon Electron Plus 3 unit because I cannot format them and uh, I cannot initiate them. And uh, one way I'm actually trying to 
uh, address this is actually by using a or an, an external floppy drive and uh, so I found already some older disks in my boxes, but uh, these are, this could be a double density disk because it is lagging the second hole here. So that's probably something that might work. And uh, this is actually an USB version and I have connected this to my uh, Windows 10 PC and I was even, uh, I was able to read for example, Grand Prix for Microprose. So this disk is still working. Uh, I thought it spent about, I don't know, 10 years uh, in the attic, facing temperatures between minus something and plus something Celsius. So <laughs> not ideal conditions to store disks, but uh, well, as I said, it is working. And here we can see it has this uh, high density hole and uh, this one not. So that's probably one candidate that might work. And uh, I found already a program that should be able to recreate this um, or to, well, let's say to transfer disk images to real disks. But uh, this requires the installation of a certain drivers and they are not certified as usual and they do not work uh, with um, Windows 10 without setting Windows 10 to developer mode. So I'm going to test this on my old Windows 7 uh, laptop and see whether I can get the drivers to work there. But the Windows version of this program, um, well, at least the readme says that it is not working with USB drives. So that might be a quick shot I have made without really investigating if this is uh, the solution I'm looking for. But well, it was pretty cheap uh, on eBay. So I thought let's give it a try at least to read some older disks, which I had in mind as well. And uh, probably I get this to work. And if not, then I really have to find another way to create this welcome disk. So um, if someone of you is aware of somebody who has a welcome disk and is willing to at least uh, create a copy of it and uh, is interested in to send me this one. I would highly appreciate this. It would really help me to get this unit um, into function. I did a quick test. Uh, usually this unit comes with a different power supply with a more beefier power supply. So uh, because the power supply of this is powering the electron as well and therefore it has to be a bit um, more powerful. But I did a quick test with the original power supply and uh, it has it, it came to life. It started to work. I was able to uh, create some, some rattling noise on the disk side as well by trying to mount a disk, for example, without even having one. So it might work with the original power supply, but I guess it is uh, power-wise on the limit. It might, it might kill the original power supply. So I really have to find a different uh, one for this unit. But as I said, I was really surprised to see this on um, G uh, eBay Germany. And I was really surprised about the price. So I really had to go for And uh, I'm quite happy that I got this one. And um, there is another extension, the plus one for the icon electron, which I'm actually missing. I can't show you this, but there is some sort of a replica. <laughs> <laughs> and um, people didn't spend that much time to build the replica in a way it was built back in the 80s. So they went for a different approach. And this is the ELK SD64 which is actually an SD um, device for your Acorn Electron. And is, this is mimic, uh, mimicking the uh, plus one extension. So you have your memory expansion 
and uh, you can access the file system on this SD card so that you can uh, load images from the internet, for example, from the um, Electron archive or the, the Acon art archive. And uh, you can use this to, for saving programs and loading programs as well. That's really something I have to figure out how this is going to work because uh, you mount sort of, uh, well, it is a, some sort of a disk image you have to mount and then you can uh, use this one. I just did some quick tests with this uh, to see if I can load something from it, if it is working at all. And uh, if the uh, data recorder attempt is failing or if the uh, plus three floppy drive attempt is failing, then this is going to be my fallback. Uh, it doesn't feel as original as intended. So <laughs> I'm not sure why I'm so piggy uh, in terms of the Electron, I want to have it like it was back in the 80s. Whereas on the C64, it can't be as modern as possible. <laughs> Where I'm adding FPGAs all over the place and uh, doing all that replacement stuff like uh, the Ultimate 1541 or even the uh, Ultimate 64 board, which isn't a C64 at all, <laughs> I mean. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, for the Elk, I think that's going to be uh, my main approach, but uh, we will see how this is going to turn out. Yep, and uh, that's actually basically the end of the video already. I mean, um, it was more the purpose to show you that I'm still here, that I'm still doing retro, and it was the purpose to say thank you to Adam for all that great stuff. I really, really um, love this and I'm, I'm so thankful for all that things. And uh, it's so much fun to work with the Acon Electron. And uh, yep, as, I've, as you have seen, I have to figure out a couple of things like uh, this video bubble, for example, why the ALF isn't doing what it is supposed to do and how to create disks with this unit. And uh, then we will probably see some more Electron stuff in the future here on this channel. And uh, well, if you want to stay informed about what I'm doing, then uh, feel free to follow me on Twitter. Uh, I'm more active there because it is much easier just to post something, to uh, make a quick tweet uh, with some photos of what's going on here in my studio but uh, I think as soon as the weather becomes a bit more well bearable I think I'm going to create uh, some more videos in the future as well so as usual thank you very much for watching and uh, if you haven't done so feel free to like and subscribe and all that things feel free to support me either on patreon or here on youtube uh, I highly appreciate your support and uh, all that stuff I get will directly go to the channel. So, and um, therefore, it is really, really helpful. And uh, yeah, as I said, thanks for watching and see you next time. <laughs> bye bye.